The purpose of this video is to provide a non-technical, very brief introduction to signal processing. The intended audience of this video is undergraduate students in electrical engineering who are often required to take courses in signal processing. Many of those students, of course, ask why should they be taking a course in signal processing? And I hope that this video would help address some of those questions. So let's begin by asking why should you care about signal processing? Now, if you are an uh, undergraduate student, your answer could be because the degree requirements call for it. And that is indeed true in many cases, but I believe there are other reasons to like signal processing. In particular, I believe you should care about signal processing because signal processing is fun. It really is, even if the mathematics seems scary in the beginning. The other reason is that you like to rely on signal processing on a daily basis, even if you do not realize it. This is because signal processing is an area that enables countless other technologies, as we'll see shortly. Signal processing also has intersection with a number of other technical areas. And so if you become expert in signal processing, you could also get jobs that intersect with those areas. Let's first talk about some of those areas of intersection. The areas are numerous, but here I have listed down four specific areas. In particular, one of the areas is digital and analog hardware. There are many applications that rely on signal processing, and they also need hardware. And so you could be an expert in hardware and also be using signal processing. Signal processing also, especially modern signal processing, has strong connections with data mining and statistics. Some of those connections, of course, only become apparent after you go to graduate school. Another area that has very strong connections with signal processing is machine learning and artificial intelligence. This area is, again, something that's becoming very hot because of the emerging field of data science. Signal processing also has very, very strong connections with another very hot area, that is of robotics and control. I would not go into the depth of these areas, but suffice it to say that there are indeed many signal processing experts that are doing jobs that are related to one of these or more areas. But let's talk specifically about now the role of signal processing in different applications. I'd like to first talk about digital photography. All of you have taken digital photographs using either SLR cameras, point-of-shoot cameras, smartphones. And what you may not have realized is that the quality of the image that you are looking at after you take the photo is a strong function of the underlying signal processing algorithm. Now, of course, the quality of the digital photograph depends on many other factors. One of the key factors is lens. You have to have a good lens if you want to take good pictures. The other key factor is the sensor array that you have on your, on your camera, smartphone. And if the sensors are not good, your pictures will come out bad. But at the end of the day, it's the image processing algorithms that sit on your device that also determine how well the pictures that you take will look. Let's talk about another application that is of medical imaging. Over the course of your life, I'm sure either you have or you know someone who has interacted with the, one of these devices, which are digital x-ray, ultrasound, MRI. There are other medical imaging devices also. All of these devices, in addition to the hardware that they rely upon, they use signal processing to render the final results. For example, if you're talking about an x-ray, the final result that you see, it is not the result that comes out of the x-ray machine. There is a signal processing algorithm that sits uh, after that data, process, uh, after the collection of that data, that processes that data further to make the image look nicer. Another field is that of navigation. Now, all of you have, at one point in your life, used GPS to figure out where you are currently or where you are likely to go. GPS, of course, relies on this constellation of satellites that rotate around the Earth. And on Earth, you have this GPS receiver that collects signals from these satellites and then processes it and tells you where you are. 
Now the quality of the location that you obtain, it's a function of the analog front end of the GPS receiver that you have. Also the processor that the GPS receiver has, for example, the processor could be not that good and it would take you a long time to process the information. But at the end of the day, again, it's a signal processing algorithm sitting on that GPS receiver that decides how well the receiver is telling you your location. Cheaper GPS devices would have perhaps crappier signal processing algorithms. A signal processing algorithm can get you a better location just by virtue of being doing better processing. National security, a big area where signal processing plays a role. Here I'm giving you three examples. One is that of a cruise missile that's trying to go to its destination and it depends upon the its accuracy depends upon signal processing algorithms among many other fields where signal processing is a key component in there. The other example is that of a radar. In in the case of uh, war or even in peacetime, you rely on radar to figure out what's on in the sky, where are the planes and so forth. Now, the quality, how accurately you can tell where a plane is, the location of that, that depends upon radar signal processing algorithms. The last example is that of sonar, which figures out what's, what is inside uh, the sea. So ships use sonars to figure out or th they map the sea surface, submarines use that to figure out what is around them. That also relies on signal processing algorithms and the better a signal processing algorithm you have, the better you will be able to tell where you are and where other things are around you. Another area is that of consumer electronics. Now there are many examples of that. I would not go into the details, but here are three specific examples. Fitness trackers. Fitness, fitness trackers are something that will have to rely on signal processing to basically clean out the signal that they receive when you're trying to walk to figure out whether it's uh, to clean out the signal so that it could then be used for perhaps machine learning algorithms. Noise canceling headphones. All these noise canceling headphones rely on signal processing algorithms to cancel the noise. Hard drives especially magnetic hard drives. They are trying to pack more and more bits on these magnetic stripes. Uh, again, it relies on a number of factors, but signal processing algorithms also play a key role in whether you can pack more information on these hard drives. So I hope that with these some of these examples, I have convinced you that signal processing is all around us you should look around and try to find out where signal processing exists in the daily things that you use. For example, we haven't even talked about uh, things like uh, HD TVs. The possibilities of what signal processing can be used to do are uh, endless. In particular, based upon what the intended application of signal processing is, you subcategorize signal processing. You talk about, for example, audio signal processing that deals with speech signal, biomedical signal processing, dealing with biomedical imaging devices, financial signal processing, if you have ever interest in finance, image and video signal processing, multimedia signal processing, that's about, for example, song recordings and so forth, radar signal processing, seismic signal processing, if you are working for, for example, an oil company or you are working to figure out where earthquakes may happen, tsunami warnings, that's where seismic signal processing plays a role. Signal processing, you could just be building hardware and still be working in signal processing. You could be a, an engineer that works on wireless communication and relies on signal processing algorithms for communications. You could be using signal processing for forensics and security. For example, you could be working on the latest techniques for doing biometrics using signal processing algorithms and countless other subcategories. Now, so how do you become an expert in signal processing? Well, most schools at the undergraduate level, the reality is can only provide a basic introduction to a tiny fraction of what modern signal processing is. Because I'm sure I've convinced you that signal processing is a huge area and you cannot cover all of that at the undergraduate level. 
Now at Rutgers, for example, the courses we offer are linear systems and signals, digital signal processing, and then an elective in signal processing that teaches you more advanced topics. In addition, students at the undergraduate level at Rutgers can learn about signal processing through either independent research, capstone design, internships, co-ops. Once you do your undergraduate and take some of these basic courses, the next step for you could be that you go to industry, learn on the job about signal processing, and then perhaps take some part-time courses to learn more about signal processing and become a better expert. Or you could directly go into a graduate school that has strong emphasis on signal processing. You have to look at the offerings of that graduate school if you are interested in signal processing before you go into a graduate school for signal processing focus. Now at the graduate school level, the reality is modern signal processing is really taught there. But you have to start at the undergraduate level. At the graduate school level, there are, a new, there are numerous offerings that are uh, given in different universities. They, for example, typical courses include statistical signal processing, adaptive signal processing, detection estimation theory, speech signal processing, digital image processing, statistical learning theory, biomedical signal processing, and many other advanced topics based upon who is the faculty in that school, what are their research interests, and so forth. With that, uh, we'll conclude this video. I hope I have convinced you that signal processing, despite its scariness or apparent scariness and uh, ma rigorous mathematics that plays a role, it really is all around us. It plays a big role in our lives. And I hope that some of you will be convinced enough to take up signal processing as a career.